Hello, YouTube. Today, we're going to talk about something the Bears hate, and that is missing out on a 30% rally. That is right. Off the low, we are up by 30%. That is pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. But I think the Bears are a little bit sad about this. Sorry, Bears. So today, we're going to give an update. We're going to talk about uh, Mike Wilson, who yesterday told us that we were wrong. We're going to circle back and talk about this a little bit later. He was looking for 3900 and 3000 for a bear case, which means he thought we would, we would be down at 3000 for the bear case, but we would close the year out at about 3900 And this is very, very curious because as I think about the capitulation from the bears, it's, well, if we're in extreme greed for bulls, it means we're in extreme fear for bears, which means that we were at about 83 this morning. Anything over 80 just means, man, the pain has been long. It has been not nice, and they just want it over and done with. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the seasonality chart. Let's look at that for one moment here because, wow, what an update. Let's go to SPY. Let's look at a one-day chart. Let's get rid of everything. Let's go to a line chart. We're clicking the top, click it line, and now we're going to note that we got to close over our 52-week high. At 455.20, that was our uh, that was our 52 week high so far. Now we're actually over. So notice the part where we go, we get the dip, we get the sorry, we get the rip, we get the dip, and now we're reversing course and we have a new closing 52 week high. Why is this important? Well, yesterday what we talked about was that here we're tracking uh, the blue line versus the blue line or the S and P actual on the line chart versus the seasonality chart. And all we were looking for was a higher high versus the high we established from before. So what do we got? Well, we got exactly that. So, so far, it appears like the bulls are in control. We continue to grind higher. And uh, that's really the story right now. So let's go through and try to make sure we can understand everything else. Because just looking at weekly charts, what's really obvious to me, and we talked about this yesterday, is that, well, we're pivoting up. So another hollow candle, which means the expansion is continuing. And yes, if you guys have a comment regarding the hollow candles, please make sure to let me know. And if you don't mind, I would really appreciate it if, you, if you could please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thank you ahead of time. So we have a hollow candle. Great. So that's a check. And we don't have a lower low. So there's no warning for SPY. And there is a signal we're going higher. Let's look at QQQ. All right, here's where the story is a little bit mixed. So we have a lower low. So, so, sorry, so we have a hollow candle, which means we're green in the week and we're higher, but we also have a lower low. So there is a warning, but there's no confirmation yet, which means the bears are crying, right? Yeah, they're crying. They're, uh, they're running for the hills. And with uh, Microsoft and Google after the bell so far, if we look and see what the after hours move is, uh, just really fast here, we note that S&P is up by about 64 cents in after hours to, to, to 4.56. And QQQ or the Qs are up by about a third of 1% up to about 380. Led by Google here in after hours. Last time I checked, it was up by about 7%. Let's just double check. Uh, about 3% here in after hours. Microsoft, it's been bouncing around, but mostly red. So we usually have to wait until the earnings call to get actual guidance from Microsoft. So we do have the preliminary numbers here. We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll talk about Alphabet, Alphabet as well. But everything can change going into tomorrow. As we all know, this market moves fast. And at least for right now, it looks like this is pretty easy. Uh, if, as long as we close green tomorrow or that line chart, which we just showed you. Again, I'll show you what that is here. SPY, one day chart. Um, we go to a line chart. And what we're looking for specifically is just that on a closing basis, we're closing higher than the previous day. So all that means is tomorrow's line. We just want to see that we have a green day. We just want to see we're closing above four, uh, 455.44. But... Uh, let's now go back here to our seasonality chart. Oops, I think I might have closed it. What this implies too is that we should be getting a thrust higher. So another push up. And the reason why that's significant is because of the data we have coming out. So what's tomorrow? Oh my goodness, we got the Fed tomorrow. Yeah, we do. So if we're going to repeat that seasonality chart, whoa, right? It's going to be tomorrow. So if the bears are wrong, it's like a perfect time to be admitting they're wrong. Just before maybe we go to even new highs. What does that mean? Well, it means uh, the seasonality chart is going to drag us up. All right, let's go through and look at the rest of the news to see if we can get a grasp on what is happening and then maybe a few more charts and uh, maybe even a hot tip or a stock idea. I'm thinking about it, we'll see how long the video takes, but drop me a comment, comment if that is something you'd be interested in. So we were wrong. 2013 was a story of higher valuations than, than we uh, than expected amid falling inflation and cost cutting. There's the headlines. Everyone was talking about Mike Wilson. Here's the story. We were wrong. Morgan Stanley's Wilson offers stocks uh, stocks mea culpa. 
Strategists underestimated valuation expansion, missed the AI boom, sees cool inflation posing threat to corporate earnings. So even here, he gives himself a little out, like, oh, hey, well, if we go down, I told you so. I said cool inflation would post a threat to corporate earnings, blah, 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 right? 30% later. And here's the really interesting stat is that you have to uh, keep in mind what these guys are paid to do, right? They mostly tell you what you want to hear. So when we look here, stocks are running way ahead of forecasts. What this means is that the black line here tells us what analysts think the market's going to do. And then the red line is what it actually does. So what does it mean here? Well, it means that these guys are not really great at predicting uh, where the market's going to go. Black line says uh, there's a big divergence here versus the red line. So they're under bullish. What does that mean? Well, that's the squeeze. That's why we're looking at the uh, the fear and greed to make sure that if this is what's happening, as long as we stay like above 80, and that'll be very important into tomorrow because we do have a uh, like a rising uh, rising wedge, rising triangle on the timeline here. If it will pop up for me, please. And thank you. Come on, CNN. No, uh, there we go. So we can see we have higher lows, but kind of a flat top. That's an ascending triangle. So we have to like hold on to the lows here. And I would say like we can't dip below 77, which means we cannot fall back into normal greed. We fall back down into normal greed. I will be a little bit worried because that means that we're actually losing momentum versus a week ago. And we're almost to where we were a, a month ago. What does that mean? We're flattening out. What do we do before we go down? Well, we flatten out. We go up, we go flat, we go down. Oh, okay. And for the lot of earnings out after the bell now, let's look and see how it's shaking out. We had Notable ones are Snap. Snap is down like 15. So let's look at Snap here. Not Snap's not in the S&P 500, so we don't really care that much about it. Oh, it's down 16, 17% now. Okay. Um, that's a bad one. Uh, Visa, we'll look at that one here. Uh, can we even see it? Where's Visa? Um, do, do, do. I can't see it there. One second here. Let's go no group. I know it's fairly big. Visa, flatten after hours. Okay, so nothing burger. Fine. Well, boring's fine in this market. Boring is bullish. Um, we have Visa, Google, and Microsoft. So uh, now we have a look here and see that Google's up by six. I think it was up by as much as seven. Google, or sorry, Microsoft is down by as much as about two, three, but it's bouncing back. Uh, net change is that the market's up. So if this is what we were worried about, well, there's less things to worry about. Those are the big guys, right? Microsoft's the second biggest company. Alphabet's in the Magnificent Seven. So these are like uh, out of the, the top five biggest companies. Then we got Meta tomorrow, but it's really about the Fed. So we can look at these Microsoft earnings here really fast. Earnings are out. Here they are. It's a beat, right? The beat crew came back. 269 over 255. That's all you got to know. Revenue beat as well. Um, they will provide more commentary on their earnings call. And for Google, 144 EPS or earnings per share beats the 134 uh, number we were expecting. Revenue also came in with a beat which means the top line is growing. That is good. That is nice. It made the chart go up. Federal Reserve meeting. Hawkish Powell may try to cool off the S&P 500. This is from, from Investors Business Daily or IBD. They are a pretty reputable, web, reputable website. And um, Jerome Powell might try, keyword there being try, to talk his way to getting the market to, to go down. I'm not so sure it's going to agree with him. So let's pay close attention and just see what happens. So what this all means is that we are now through Tuesday. So it's now Tuesday. We're over it. Um, we have the uh, the Wednesday data, which is going to be F1C, interest rate decision, also the presser or the press conference. And let me see if I can actually pull up that uh, um, a Fed tool watch we have here. Um, because what we can look at is going to be the anticipated rate increase for, uh, for now. So it's at 98.9%. It would be a surprise if they did not raise rates. So the markets had a chance to price that in. Looking out to September, uh, let's just make sure we double check here. So we're looking at 525 to 550 as the range, which means we would be raising the 550. That confuses you. It just means um, raise in July, flat in September. There's an 81% chance they pause. And then going out to November, there's a 60% chance they pause, a 30% chance they hike, and then a 4% chance they go by 50 basis points. And going out to December, 58% chance that they're going to be pausing, which means that so far, at least until the end of the year, the market is saying, not that the market's right, but the market is saying, that's it, you're done. There's no more. If we look out a little bit further, uh, we can note here we have, and the reason why this is important is because July has a big gap. There's going to be July to August, August to September, which means a two-month gap where before we're meeting basically every month. So that'll be important because there's going to be a big gap. We know we got economic data this month, um, and sorry, for the next two months. And notably, we got that core PCE coming in or the Fed's favorite gauge. And if it ticks down to 4.2, like we talked about yesterday, 
we could be off to the races. That could be the, uh, the seasonality chart just pumping us even higher. And if Q2 GDP comes in at 1.7%, uh, I think that's going to be pretty good because 2% is like pretty strong for, for an economy. And right now, the there's at least a 50% chance that we're not, uh, or higher, that the market is priced in that we're expecting a pause. So the market's already set a pause. We can re-review those numbers tomorrow, but it really comes down to what Jerome says during the press conference. Just like um, what the uh, the easiest way to try to think about this, if we look at like say the Microsoft here. So Microsoft right now was down by about 1% in after hours. We'll see what happens when the CEO talks, right? We'll see what happens. So when the CEO talks, we'll see. And the reason why we think about this is because individual companies like Microsoft, they care about the CEO. The CEO or chief executive officer tells them what they expect for the future. But what does the overall stock market look like? Well, they look to the central bank, and that's Jerome Powell. So as important as an individual company's um, CEO is, the entire stock market cares about the Fed. So we're going to hear from the Fed tomorrow, and that'll be the only press conference for about two months. So this is the part of the summer where we say, time to sell in May and go away and come back on Labor Day. This is the part where you're supposed to be able to walk away from the screen. You're supposed to be able to go on holidays. We'll see if that's going to happen again this year. All right, and uh, just since we're at about 11 minutes, I do have a stock I would like to go through just in case there are some people out there who are looking for it. So um, there's a specific pattern that I'm looking at. And if you wanna join us again, link is in the, in the description in the top comment. If there's any of these you would like to go through, but I will show you an example here of something that I am looking for. Let me just pull up a good one here. I'll give you a good one actually. I'll give you one that I actually own around my cost basis too. So as we're going into the end of the week, what I want to see is that we either have strong stocks acting stronger or at least the stocks that are trying to get strong are not weak. So I'll show you an example here. I'll actually show you two of them. So the first one I'm going to show you here is STZ. Um, this is Constellation Brands. And what I'm looking at here is that we're in blue sky territory, which means new all-time highs over here on the right-hand side, which is going to be the weekly chart. And drop me a comment if you're interested in this because I'm trying to make sure that um, I'm providing some value. So what I want to do is just show you what I am looking at to get into names. This is a strong stock. By definition, by being in blue skies or all-time highs, it's strong. So what happens? Well, weekly chart says new all-time highs. Now we're going to look here specifically at the daily chart because we want to see what the momentum is. Momentum means the trade. What's the Where's, where's the price pointing? Well, it's pointing to the ceiling. It's in all-time highs. Volume increases as we go higher, bullish. We can also note we have a golden cross here. So that golden cross just means that the short-term price or the 50 moving average is now over the long-term price or the 200 moving average. So we note that we have the golden cross. We bounce once, we bounce twice, and then we gap and go. So if this stock comes back down, fills the gap, this 50 MA should curl up to where we are here. And that should be another nice bounce on the 50 DMA. So if we, if we come back down and test this, I'll be looking to buy it. It's also a back test of the previous top. This looks like a really solid area. This is a strong chart. So what we, what, we, what we would expect is that it continues to act strong. I'll show you one more now. And uh, I'll show you one. And uh, second thing I would just note here is that it's also over its 50 weekly moving average. So it's over the short-term price on the weekly. And it's over the 200, which means it's over all of the averages. That's a strong chart. I don't own this one, but I'm watching it as a leader. Here's one that I own, Atlassian. I like the stock. I use the service uh, for the company. And uh, the reason why I like it, very similar here. We look over to the left-hand side. It's over that 50 MA. So that's the first thing that I like. It's over the short-term price. It hit it, rejected, hit it, rejected, hit it, rejected. This time it's battling for it. So for some reason, it might be it might be go time. So what I'm looking for is over, back test, higher low, higher high, coming back. And I have a smaller position now on this one here. My average is around 175. So when I look here back to the daily chart, I now want to point out something that this chart is doing what I want it to here. Where? That same thing we looked at in Constellation or STZ. We have that golden cross and we now have two bounces here, which means it comes back down, finds support on that weekly chart as well and on the daily. So we have double support. It starts to curl back up. What I need to see for this one to continue to be bullish for me is I got to see higher highs. So I got to see high, higher, higher, highest, which means we're really forming a channel higher at the top, at the bottom, at the top, at the bottom, at the top, at the bottom. That's how we form higher highs and higher lows. So a very simple story. Hopefully you like this idea. And uh, if you do, I would really appreciate it if you could drop me a comment if you watched all the way through to the end and found value, value in it. If not, uh, no problem. We have a weekend video now queued up here to watch on the left-hand side. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you tomorrow.